They told me, when we see burns this bad, we usually have a 24 to 48 hour window, and that's it. And so they were giving me basically that much hope that it, you, that's how much time you have to get the family here. Say goodbye. In the summer of 2016, Catherine Stewart's husband, Jimmy, was enjoying a weekend at their cabin with family and friends outside of Anchorage, Alaska. Little did they know, the propane that powers the cabin had been slowly filling the crawl space due to a leaky connection. Late Saturday night, Jimmy went into the crawl space to investigate, when suddenly it exploded. Their son, Stephen, was outside during the blast. I just remember seeing that flash of red where there was the flame, and that's when I heard the kind of rushing wind sound that was accompanied with the explosion. And it blew out windows, and it blew a whole wall out and dislodged the whole second story from the first. Jimmy had taken the full force of the fiery explosion and was still alive. Stephen's wife, Anna, remembers the moment Jimmy emerged from the cabin. It was very shocking. He was just completely white. His skin was all white. Um, he had no hair. In an area where they've never had cell service, they miraculously got a call out to 911. As Stephen drove his dad to meet the ambulance, he prayed for his father, who is a pastoral leader with the Alaska Baptist Convention. I remember uh, praying uh, for longevity of, of ministry, that the Lord would sustain his life so that he could continue doing what you've called him to do. In Anchorage, Catherine soon got word that her husband was life flighted to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle due to the severity of his burns. Right away, she called friends to pray. I didn't ask them really so much to do anything. I said, just pray. Jimmy's been a horrible accident. We need to get the word out. Please pray. And I just told him there's been an explosion at the cabin, and he's been life lighted out. Thousands of people from their network of churches and around the world began praying for Jimmy's survival. He was placed on life support and received top medical care. But with third degree burns covering 77% of his body, he was not expected to survive more than a few days. Despite the poor prognosis, Catherine took all their concerns to God in prayer. Every time I, you know, would go to the Lord with those things, then I would feel more hope, more hope, more hope. And that strengthened me, that hope is strength, purely from the Lord. We can't come up with it on our own. It's supernatural, absolutely. I think it was the Lord giving us this peace that we just couldn't understand, that, that didn't really make sense, um, that He was gonna be sovereign over well, the whole experience and, and everything, and he, he had Dad's life in His hand. Nine days after the explosion, he was able to breathe on his own. Several weeks went by and Jimmy clung to life. One night while praying against infection and fear, Catherine had a vision of two angels around his bed. And they were huge and they were strong and powerful and they were on guard. And that's what they were doing, watching over Jimmy. And the Lord said to me, not in audible words, but in that picture that he gave me. I got this. You don't have to fear. Catherine hung cards, prayers, and photos around his room and created an atmosphere of praise and worship. Over several months, Jimmy endured surgeries to save his appendages and multiple skin grafts to replace the vast amount of dead skin. With each surgery, doctors warned the family about the risks that could take his life be prepared, you know, there could be brain damage. It was all these things. And then they would come back from the surgery and it, it seemed like a 10 out of 10, they would come back and like, well, all the bad things that could have happened didn't. <laughs> and uh, he, he made it through and it was weird, <laughs> but we're glad, you know, we're glad. There's just so many miracles that come on happening. And so each time something would happen and he'd get revived and he'd get better and stronger and come through it, they were just amazed. They began to call him Miracle Man because he just kept on getting better every single time and defying what they expected. The power of prayer um, is so invisible, but it is, it is so undeniable. Six months after surviving the explosion that should have killed him, Jimmy walked out of the hospital with a body full of scars, but also a new opportunity to tell everyone he meets about the loving God who carried him through 
and the church who prayed for him. People walk up to me all the time and I get to share with them because they say, do you mind sharing your story, what happened? And when I do, I get to talk about the greatness and the goodness of God. This has been the most three meaningful years of my life. And it's just been overwhelming to me to see how God has worked through all this. I have seen the power of God. It didn't shake my faith, it strengthened my faith. Just weeks after being released from the hospital, he was able to walk his daughter down the aisle at her wedding. Jimmy returned to his job at the Alaska Baptist Convention and even plays racquetball competitively. He says God has continued to strengthen him through every challenge he's faced. He's walking with me in the valley of the shadow of death. I don't fear any evil. I don't fear any problems. He is with me. He's going to restore my soul. He's going to leave me besides quiet water. He's going to anoint my head with oil and just heal me and walk with me. God loves us. I want people to know that, and in the midst of their deepest, darkest valley, I want them to trust God. Let God be God.